The first step to creating a QR scavenger hunt is to create a shotgun start. This allows your students, each different group of students, to start the QR scavenger hunt in a different location so they're not chasing around after each other. What you want to do to start is to just create a regular Google form. So I gave it a title and I plugged in a set of directions here at the top. And then I added a first question simply by going here to the plus sign to add a question. So write the last names of your group members. That's a really important first step and I want to make sure that this question is required. So the next thing I want to do is actually add a question here. And my second question is which group number are you? This will be a required question and I want it to actually be a multiple choice type of question. So what you will have had to do at this point, before this point, is actually assign your students uh, group numbers. So just remember that the smaller the number of groups that you have, the fewer questions or sets of questions that you have to create. If you create 10 separate groups, just know that you have to create 10 different sets of questions. So for the sake of today, we're just going to go through and I'm going to create three different groups. So again, it's a required question. So here's where things get a little bit funky. You're going to go down to the three dots next to the required option, and you're going to choose the option go to section based on answer. And right now I'm going to leave this alone. Instead, what I'm going to do is come over here to the toolbar on the right, and what looks like an equal sign, I'm going to push on that, and that actually creates a separate section. So I don't want just a separate question as I would do if I was going to click on the plus sign here. I want an entirely separate section. So again, three little buttons on the right hand side, um, I'm sorry, up here on the right hand side, you're going to go to the equal sign that will create another section for you. So the section here that I'm going to start with is group one starting point. That's what I'm going to title it. And I'm actually not even going to add a question here. I'm simply going to put in the clue that will lead group one to their starting location. So that clue, for example, could be something like staying fit is no small so hopefully my group would figure out that this should connect them to the small gym. So then I'm going to go over here and create another separate section. So this will be group two starting point. And my clue for this one is something like check out our hardware, which hopefully should lead them to something like our trophy case. Then for my third and final group, group three, starting point. And hopefully this would lead them to the cafeteria. All right, so I'm done with creating my separate sections. Now what I'm going to do is actually scroll back up to the top here and remember how I chose to send each group to a different section based on their response? Well now I need to plug in which section I want to send them to. So group number one I want to send to section two, which is actually group one starting point. Group two, I'm going to send them to section three, group two starting point. And finally, group three, send them to section four, group three starting point. All right. So what that will actually do when the students have to complete this part of the form, it will automatically take them to whichever starting point um, is appropriate for them. So the last thing that you need to know how to do on this form is actually how to find the link so that you can share the completed form with your students. So you're actually going to go up here to where it says send and you'll notice notice that you can actually grab a link here as the second option. Okay, You can choose to shorten the link here but I never find that that's actually all that short. So what I typically do is copy the original version of the link and then I'll go over to a website like um, Google Shortener, or you can use something like TinyURL if you choose to do that instead. So what I'll do here is actually plug in the original link, I'm not a robot, and choose to shorten the URL. I really am not a robot. So shorten my URL, that gives me a really much shorter URL that I can then copy and I can post on the board if I want to for my students, I can share it via Google Classroom, etc. But that's, the, that's a form that every single group member needs um, 
access to at the very beginning of the scavenger hunt.